Hey, welcome everybody. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is a new week. It is Monday, September 12th. Now we're going to be taking a look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader. I see a lot of stuff through the day and I gather up a small pile and then I share it with you at the end of the day. Now I'm looking for things that are hot and have potential and I may get that from looking at the charts. There just may be a great setup without any news or buzz online. It just looks like it's going to be breaking up. Or maybe there is a lot of chatter and buzz online. That'll definitely get a stock moving. Or you could just have some great news. Now that's news I've personally looked at over the last four or five days. You got your oldest news up at the top. Your newer news will be down at the bottom. Now these are all penny stocks on the OTC market. I make that stipulation because penny stocks can be on any market. As long as they're under $5, they're considered a penny stock regardless where they're at. So we can easily be looking at some major exchange stocks as well. Now, right now, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. It's an excellent site for doing research on OTC stocks. The reason I primarily like this, it's updated every single day by Fiener and the SEC. Now, I just don't mean the name, the ticker, and the stock count. I mean all the information as it's constantly occurring is being updated on this site. Right now, we're on one of my best pages to come to for quick information. This is the news page. Come up here to market activity, you've got a lot of choices here, right? Well, the first column is where we primarily stay. Second, third, and fourth column, those are only for the companies. Don't worry about them. And if you want to get some education, you can come over here to the last column. But the first column is really where all the information is. And they got a lot of great information on this site. So we're on the news page. And check this out. On one page, you've got news as it's rolling in, fresh off the presses. Now, you do have to refresh manually it doesn't just go live stream but as soon as you hit that button if there's any new news it'll be right here at the top financial reports are rolling in through the day most current will be at the top and then one of my favorites sec filings i come here numerous times through the day and i look at my 8ks my 6ks my s1s they're brief form so you don't have to go through pages and pages looking for information you can do a half a scroll down read a couple sentences and have an idea are they putting in officers is there a split is this a public offering you know right from the start and this is where you're going to get big information your reverse splits your reverse mergers your acquisitions your spin outs good news and bad news the important stuff will be found in those so i'm always looking at those now, speaking of looking at, let's take a look at how our day finished today on the OTC market. I have already refreshed this page to get the current numbers. Our dollar volume has not changed. Again, we are still at 1.6 billion. I've been telling you all the time, our average is 2.1 billion. Not anymore. It is officially 1.6 billion. That's our new average. Boo! Share volume. Hey, we are over 10 billion. I'm sure that's going to be short lived, but enjoy it while it's here. Double digits. Trades. Well, we've been hovering around 250,000. We haven't got far from it. So we're not getting a whole lot of extra activity on the OTC market. Now, I've got a variety of stocks I want to share with you. I think these are pretty interesting stocks for a variety of reasons, and I'm hoping you'll see some interesting ones in there as well. Check these out. You know, most of the stocks I find, I find because of a piece of catalyst. It's not always the volume. It's not always the price. I've got a normal routine in the morning where I jump around on a lot of pages just to see what's going on to catch up. And this is one of the pages I come to. It's called the tier change page. It's over here at the OTC markets. Go under market activity, hit your corporate action button, come down here, hit that top arrow. Now, it normally says symbol and name changes, I think. But remember to scroll down or you won't see it. There's tier changes right there. Click that and you get it. And it is most current. You can see these are all today. And this tells you when a company moves from one tier to another. Maybe they go from the pink to the QB. That's great news because on the QB, you have to be audited. All your financials have to be looked at by a licensed CPA, not on the pink. So that's good to know. Or they could have fallen off of the pink down to the expert market. That's horrible. The expert market is where you go when you're late on filings and don't get them caught up in time. It's just a timeout. It's not a delisting. Once they get caught up, they're back on the market. And that's what happened today with DRGV, Dragon Capital Group. They were on the expert market 
couldn't buy them, couldn't sell them, and today they came on Pink Limited, which means they still have something that they gotta provide, but at least they're back on the open market and can be bought and sold. And normally you get a bounce out of that, and that's what we had today, a bounce. We finished the day at 0008 with just about 14.5% gains. She's got those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, verified profile and a transfer agent, and they are a shell company. Now, shell company means they've got no business, they've got no income, and it's kosher. Everybody knows that. It just means now we're ready. We're waiting for a deal. Could be a reverse merger or an acquisition. Now, down here in the description, they tell us, and I couldn't find this like in an 8K or a 6K, so I don't know the amount or who or when. With new capital contribution completed on August 2022, DRGV has an active mandate to identify and acquire operating companies with the preference for those in the healthcare industry based in North America, specifically those demonstrating modest but predictable growth and profitability over time. And that's all we know. They've gotten some money and they're out shopping now. So something should be occurring here soon. What's the relative volume that they got today? Well, she's normally doing 2.4 million when she's on the market. She came back on the market today and did 10 times that much, 24 million. Share structure, we got over here, we got a huge float. 2.2 billion, closer to 2.3. Though look at the outstanding. They got 36 billion up there. So the insiders have a lot more shares than we do. Financials, we know we got nothing over here annually or quarterly, let's get that quarterly up there, zip, and disclosures. Well, they did just come back on the market, so I would expect to see some financials have all been put in here recently. And we've got one, two, three of them here. There's a annual for the end of last year, there's Marches and there's Junes, all put in on the same day. That was uh, the last day of last month, so that's taken almost two weeks to get all that information approved and then finally get back on the market. And let's see, do we have any news with this company? Anything current? 2015 and new. That's all there is. So there is no catalyst except coming off of the expert market. Let's go take a look at that chart. Standard operating procedure. We are using my free trading platform, Think or Swim. If you like what you see, you need a trading platform, Go on over to TD Ameritrade. Just sign up for their free trading account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. What you gotta do is keep your account open. That's it. Keep your account open and you can use Thinkorswim anytime you like. Now, this is not DRGV. <laughs> no, it isn't, but I thought you'd be interested in this before we look at DRGV. This is the very last stock I was looking at before the day ended. It had caught my interest. You can see why. Look at that huge run. This is a six month, four hour chart for EVAHF. She's been doing absolutely nothing until here recently where she took off from a penny up to 73 cents. Folks, that's incredible gains, just incredible. Now she's only got about five days of trading here. However, that is not over the last five days. No, that's over the last 30 days. She's only had five days of trading and she's been on the open market. She has been available to buy, just no interest. Now, when I seen that bar today, I did my DD and I couldn't find anything. There's no filings, no news presses. I could see no reason why this was running. So this is one of those stocks without buzz, without news, is taking off. So all I'm gonna say is put EVHF on your radar. Something's happening. Look at those technicals, they're all going to the moon. Looks like it just wants to continue. So now let's take a look at DRGV. That is our six month, four hour chart for DRGV. She's been under the 200 mostly all this time. She did try to break it here once and paid dearly for it, dropping from her high bubble of 0018 to a low of 0001. Boom, right to the basement floor. I mean, you had to bounce off that low bubble. There's nothing underneath it. That is the absolute lowest price you can buy a stock for on the open market. Didn't seem to help. She struggled getting over the 50-day SMA here, fell down, scraped her belly across the floor, and then about five days ago, she took off with decisiveness. I mean, you can tell she shot for that 200 and is looking real good right now. You can see that decision. All the technicals changed at the same time, and they are very, very strong right now. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view, 
All right, so we don't have a full 20 days here. Let's see what we got going on. This is August 30th, 31st, the 2nd, the 7th, the 8th, and the 12th. So we are missing days in here, although it is definitely an uptrend. She has broken her 200, and she looks pretty strong right now. All of the SMAs are working their way up. She's had a dip here at the end of the day, and our technicals still look strong. But, of course, your RSI falls whenever you have a dip. Five-day, five-minute. Stair-stepping up. Catching some wind now. Our bars are getting bigger. Looks like she's bouncing off of that 20 again. Maybe. We got our 50-day SMA coming into the picture. It may come down and test that before it bounces. Everything does look like it's falling right now. But the only catalyst we got out of this is the fact that they have come back onto the open market and they tell us they've got some money and they're out shopping. That's it. DRGV. Now I'm willing to bet you know this company. We have talked about ILUS before, Illustrato Pictures International. This is a fire prevention company. This was saved by Karen Courier initially. It was on the expert markets without any management to take care of it. She got custodial ship of it, pulled it off the expert market by getting all the filings taken care of, cleaned it up, got it pink, put it back on the market, and got a deal with this company. And they're into fire prevention. All sorts of subsidiaries with all sorts of aspects. They deal with selling firefighting equipment to fire departments. They sell vehicles, small electric vehicles and big gas firefighting trucks. They also have metaverse training, how to fight fires. They also outfit hotels and high rises with sprinkler systems and security. And the company just keeps growing. They just keep making more and more money. And today's news was big. It was simply chalked full of catalysts, lots of them. Matter of fact, if you take a look at one of my favorite pages over here at the OTC market, this is the advancers page, shows you the biggest gainers across the entire OTC market. But what I really like about it is this column. They show you how many trades the company has had that day or any time you check it. Well, look at Eyeless. They did 4,584 trades today. Folks, that is an incredibly large number. You rarely ever see anything over 1,000. So to see 4,500 is a massive number. Now, personally, I equate the trades to people. Now, I'm not going to say there's 4,584 people trading it, but I'll bet you there were literally thousands of people trading this stock today. So Eyeless, she finished the day at about 11.5 cents with just about 58% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's got the verified profile and transfer agent, so she looks good. Now, this is the news that came out today. We'll look at the other facts after we look at this news. They give us lots of information here and actually bullet it, but I want to go over this with you. The company itself, Eyeless, wants to uplist to the NASDAQ, and you got to go through a few steps to take care of that. You've got to audit yourself. They've just finished their audit for 2020 and 2021. Then you've got to submit all that information with a Form 10-12G, and they're in the midst of doing that right now. Um, ILIS is also in talks with a major investment bank regarding the planned uplist of a subsidiary, which they have talked about before and we have been waiting. During this month, the company will make an announcement confirming the investment bank and its associated plans. Linked to the investment bank confirmation, Eyeless will make an announcement regarding its planned share lockup and share buyback. Another catalyst, a share buyback. It's a great way to give shareholder value and it definitely helps the company. Since its first investment project in Siberia has been approved by the government and the property purchase agreed with the seller, Eyeless will be announcing the first project launch this month with details of the property, deal, incentives, and benefits. So they've got another deal over in Siberia that they're going to be announcing here this month. Eyeless's international subsidiary, Quality Industrial Core, is in the final stages of completing the acquisition of a $100 million plus revenue process manufacturing company headquartered in the United Arab Emirates. The subsidiary has already signed a binding agreement with the acquisition target. 
paid the first agreed payment of $1 million, and both parties are now working through the final documentations for the anticipated deal completion and announcement during September 2022. Another announcement of making headway this month. Simultaneously, ILAS Emergency Response Subsidiary Emergence Response Technologies is working through completion of four acquisitions. Oh my God, you've got the company itself trying to uplist. They're uplisting a subsidiary. They've got a deal they're closing in Siberia that is going to have property attached to it. And they've got Quality Industrial Core here, which is acquiring a $100 million revenue company. And their other subsidiary, Emergency Response Technology, is closing four of them. Holy cow, this company is going crazy. What was the relative volume around this company today? Wow, over 10 times as much. She normally does 7.3 million. Today she did 73 million. How curious that is. Share structure for this company. Not great. We got 1.2 million in our float. Financials. I know this company's making money. Now take a look here. They only made $3,000. Remember, we got to take the three zeros here and put them behind all the numbers down here. $3,000 back in 2018. Nothing during COVID, 2019 and 20. And then boom, at the end of 2021, they did over $11 million. Now, looking at the quarterly, look at this. There is $3 million the first quarter. Now, if you think about it, $11 million, let's just round it up to $12 million. They're doing $3 million a quarter. That's their average. And the first quarter of this year is their average, $3 million. What happened? Look, the second quarter of this year, they're almost at $20 million. What a huge increase in revenue. That is awesome. Disclosures. Got anything new over here? Uh, not since 2016 in the SEC filings. And of course, all of their financials are caught up. And the news we have already looked at. You know why they're running. Well, one of those five, six reasons. <laughs> Let's go take a look at the chart. As you were expecting, a six-month, four-hour chart for ticker ILUS. We got a high bubble back here of about 38 cents and a low bubble about a month ago of six cents. She has been under the 200 all this time, even under the 50. She's only broke the 200 twice with her high bubble and today. And look at the size of the price bars. You can see they're pretty much all the same until today. Huge news, huge bars, way above the 200 on the four hour chart. And look at those technicals. Everything is going to the moon. It looks beautiful. 20 day, one hour view. For the last 19 days, she's been under the 200, not looking real healthy. And today, she shot up. Why wouldn't she? There was a lot of great news today. All the technicals are screaming on the one hour. You couldn't really ask for anything better. Five day, five minute. Well, she's actually been climbing all these last five days. It's been very gentle and steady, but she's been above the 200 without any volatility until today's news. And then she went crazy and she ended the day on a high bubble. Now she did dip just before she went to that high. She bounced off to 50 here and is shot back up and is looking strong. And that's what our technicals tell us. You can see that curve and turn up, down and churning up. And we are just underneath the overbought. This five minute looks good. She looks like she wants to continue and I don't blame her. They've got a lot going on between the company uplisting, uplisting a subsidiary, which means dividends for the shareholders of iList. They've got lots of acquisitions from multiple subsidiaries that they're involved in. And they said they're gonna be telling us a bunch of this news in September. Well, that's the next two weeks. So we got a lot going on here. You know, I've always liked iList. I like Karen Courier's play. She's got lots of different stocks out there. She's done it to about maybe 20 different companies that she saved off the expert market, cleaned up, put on the open market and made deals for. As a matter of fact, I forgot to mention that that first stock we look at, DRGV, that's a Karen Courier play as well. Absolutely is. And she's looking for a deal for it right now. So, Eilis looks hot to me. i definitely be watching this one tomorrow and for the long run. Fire is never going to stop being around. <laughs> now, believe it or not, this company too is a Karen Courier play. Swear to God, I did not intend for that to happen. It's not my fault that all of her companies are making money on the same day. This is sticker CGAC, Code Green Apparel. 
it too finished a day at triple zero eight with about 78 percent gains it's on the pink tier current got those green ticks i tell you to look for so it looks good now they are a shell company as well they got no business and are not making any revenues which is why the news that came out today is important they are talking about making money they tell us here that code green apparel announces that they have signed a letter of intent to enter a management contract with db management DB Management anticipates that the new operation will begin generating significant revenue within 120 days or sooner. That is always exciting news for a shell company to hear that revenues are going to be coming in. The digital platform that's been developed by DBM utilizes technology to digitize, fractionalize, and monetize the value of real estate and other assets by separating that value from its use and ownership interests. This is new. They're trying to create a new type of currency with a new type of value. A little bit over my head, but they are on the cusp of new technology with this. And just to show you, right here, we are excited to bring Code Green into the next level of technology. Stated Code Green Apparel Corporation CEO, Karen Courier. She always keeps a position with her companies. Could be CEO, could be consultant, could be accountant, but she's always in there somewhere. So what was the relative volume around CGAC today? Huge. Wow. She's normally doing 23 million shares a day. Today she did over a half a billion, 618 million shares. Incredible jump. Share structure. Ah, looks like Karen Courier's companies have a lot of shares in the float. This has 3.8 billion. It is a ton of shares. Financials, you're not going to see anything over there. They're not making any money yet and disclosures we'll try that again disclosures well of course they're current on their filings so we're looking for 8ks or something like that nothing since 2021 so let's bounce on over to that chart and see what it looks like kind of looks like an atypical otc stock chart there that is a six month four hour view for cgac right up against the wall six months ago we have our high bubble of double zero two three and about a week ago we hit a low of triple zero four we are double that right now at triple zero eight she has been under the 200 most of this time she started fighting it she's trying to get over it without any luck started falling away and here with huge volume huge bars she's gotten on top of that 200 and is sitting pretty technicals look at this overbought rsi tsunami on the macd we got a directional change here she was falling she's going up now and our ppo just had a crossover looks good on the four hour 20 day one hour all right pretty plants it over the last 19 days even took a dip here boy her low is back here but she got real close to that i bet she's almost there right now matter of fact let me grab my money line and see what we got there is that the same low oh yeah Look at that. She was bouncing off that low over and over until today. And she rocketed up here. She did hit a high of 0009 and pulled back just a wee bit. Technicals are still looking really strong on the hourly. Five day, five minute. Not a whole lot going on before today. Today we had a big jump. She hit her high here in the middle of the day at noon. High noon. She came down, only gave away one tick. She is now here at triple zero eight, floating high above her 200. Technicals, hey, look, we got a spread here. You see how the blue is going up and you see the red going down? Whenever you see those two separating, guaranteed the price will go up. As long as they're going further apart, the price is always going up. So that is a nice setup there. Looks like our MACD is in agreement. It has just crossed the signal line pushing up. Only thing that's a little tempted right now is our rsi at 54. we would like to see some volume come in there help that price rise so cgac they do have something on the horizon here money's going to be coming in and that could get this excited even before it happens cgac watch for the rise on this chart now surely this company looks familiar to you this is ticker sbox super box inc we've looked at this twice together on July 26th, when this company, SBOX, did a reverse merger with Quantum Core Innovation, Inc. And since then, they've had their name changed, they've had their ticker changed. Then we looked at it again on August 10th. I can't remember why we looked at it, but since then, the company has been rising. 
and today she finished at $1.50 with about 31% gains. She too is on the pink tier and current, got those green ticks looking good, but she's a shell risk. Now that's completely different than a shell company. Shell risk means she has a business, but they're not reporting revenues, which is always a bad thing. Now they had some good news today, but it leaves a lot of gaps. And I'm wondering if it went over a lot of people's heads. It kind of did over mine. I mean, I get the point, but I don't really get the picture. They tell us here that Quantum Core Innovation Inc. announces that it has invented and patented a nuclear-powered extrusion system for the use on the Martian surface for the primary purpose of manufacturing bricks, a repeated interlocking component that serves as a structural, functional basis for rapid manufacturing of habitats, facilities, and other buildings necessary for colonization. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Obviously, it's some sort of device to make bricks, and it sounds like it's going to be nuclear-powered. They're not going to have electricity to plug into up there, are you? And they make these special Lego bricks that are all going to hook together. Are they serious? Well, that's why I highlighted this. We are invited to the IEEE Aerospace Conference at Yellowstone Conference Center in Big Sky, Montana in 2023. You don't get invited to these things unless you're serious. So yeah, I guess this is a serious thing. So what was the relative volume around this serious thing today? Seriously? <laughs> I mean, really? Wow, she does less than 7,000 shares a day, and today she only did 16,300 shares. Either under the radar or nobody cares. Uh, what is the share structure on this company? All right, at least we got something going on with some of these stocks. Really low float, 4.5 million. Fantastic. Now they say she's not making any money. How long has that been going on? Oh, geez, looks like forever. Anything quarterly? She's never made any money. Holy cow, so there's room for improvement here. Absolutely. And our filings. Well, we know her financials are current because she's current, right? And our SEC filings, holy cow, we got nothing here since 2020. I love 8Ks, but I want them current. And we've looked at the news. So let's go check out that chart. So that is SBOX, ticker SBOX, six-month, four-hour chart. A little lean. She hasn't been trading every single day over that time period. And this is when we looked at it. These are lines to remind me when we were here. This is July 26th, the reverse merger. And then we looked at it August 8th, August 9th. Can't remember why. But look, she has been running up ever since we took a look at it. So there must have been a good reason we looked. Our technicals are really strong. PPO is climbing up, getting a good spread on that pink. Our direction of our ADX has not changed. This tells me the continuation of the trend. If this doesn't change direction, the trend doesn't change direction. So everything looks promising. MACD is a tsunami going up, and we are on fire for the RSI. 20-day, one-hour view. <laughs> Ditto! We've just got a nice, gentle climb without any struggle here. Technicals are all still pushing up and looking really, really strong. Five day, five minute for S Box. Never a bad picture on this chart, is there? And look at, she is bouncing across her high right now. She isn't even wanting to fall. She had a little itty bitty tiny dip here and came right back up. And technicals, she's in the overbought on the five minute. MACD is high, PPO is high. Everything looks good, folks. I would keep my eye on SBOX. And when you consider that she only did 16,000 shares today with a float of 4.5 million, look at the gains. She jumped from $1.17 to $1.50. Now, 16,000 shares is nothing. And compared to 4.5 million, it is nothing. And 4.5 million is a nothing float. That's a very little float. So if this jumped this far with only 16,000 shares, what do you think it's going to do when it gets hundreds of thousands of shares or millions of shares? I would keep my eye on SBOX. It's been running for a while and it looks like it wants to continue. Strange group of stocks there. Most of them Karen Courier plays. Not the last one though. SBOX is not a Karen Courier play. So we got stocks coming off the expert market that were making gains. We got Eyeless, which is doing $20 million in a quarter with lots of acquisitions and possible uplistings to SBOX, which is making bricks for Mars. Egads, lots of different companies. 
DD can be fun, folks. Swear to God, you don't know what you're going to uncover. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.